the rain the diamonds. And uh, the stoma, stoma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have, because I have, uh, yeah, well, I was, I was in Ling. Uh, but then I had this discussion about. Right. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, you know, probably remember, but you know, all the forms you can do some like that. The big thing about length, they do learn to laugh. Oh, great. I'm good, thanks, yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I am. Uh, uh, and I'm going to ask Major Hans to blow the whistle and we'll all go over the top. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Oxton Society, I'd like to welcome you all here today for this celebration. I'm uh, Jeff Willis, I'm the Vice Chair of the Oxton Society, and uh, the running order is, first of all, we're going to have a word from Dominic, who owns this property. We're going to hear from uh, Alan Graham, our local councillor. Uh, we're going to hear from the... Uh, the grandson of our hero today, George Schultz, who's John Schultz. Put your, put your hand up, John. There he is. Um, and uh, Major Paul Hans, assisted by Captain Robert Barr, are going to do the unveiling. I'll just say a, a few words about the Oxen Society, which was founded in 1979. It's one of 26 conservation areas in the world and we've got about 800 members and our aims are to preserve and enhance the conservation area and secondly to raise awareness of the history of Oxton and also to promote community events. In terms of raising awareness on the history we're well served by a little group in the Oxton Society, the History Group. They produce, they produce the brilliantly re researched Oxton History Periodical, which comes out four times a year in the Oxton Newsletter. And this is the fifth blue plaque that they've uh, organized, and each time they organise a blue plaque celebration, they produce an, a fantastic booklet which is available to buy if you go on the Oxford Society website. The blue plaque scheme uh, is designed to celebrate significant people who have a link to Oxton. And Captain George Edward Schultz is one of those people and we'll hear more about him from his grandson shortly. But this booklet, which is a fantastic uh, piece of research, has been put together by uh, John and Bob Knowles and uh, financed by them and it's available for you to pick up. If you want to make a small donation, you can. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to invite Dominic to say a few words. He's the owner, and he, without him, none of this would be possible. Thank you, Jeff. Um, four areas to thank. Uh, firstly, Commanding Officer and Captain for coming, attending, and unveiling. Much appreciated. Um, Sarah, Seb, and I live in the house, and we've been really. Uh, fortunate to enjoy the house over the last 20 years. Uh, the second thank you is to everybody who's come. Thank you very much. We were slightly hesitant about the weather, but we got there, thereabouts. Thirdly, the Oxton Society, which haven't been in, uh, an Oxton uh, community member for 20 years, haven't lived here since 2001. What a lovely place to, to live. And the Oxton Society do so much for our fantastic community. That it should be supported, so please do. Um, but lastly, John, John and the family, who have done fantastic work in recognising George. But I thought your article on Radio Merseyside didn't just talk about George, it talked about everybody who committed and gave up so much 
and I thought that was really powerful. I thought it was fantastic. If you haven't heard it, it's on Radio Merseyside yesterday morning. Like just half ten, John, was it? Give or take, so you can get it on BBC Sounds. But what a fantastic article, because this is a recognition of George, but it's a recognition of so many more people that did so much. John, the work you and your family have done is sensational, so thank you very much. Well done. Well done, Dorney. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Alan Brain, one of the, the local councillors, and uh, I would... <laughs> great timing, here's the rain. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so, thank you all very much for coming. I'll keep it short in view of the, in view of the uh, downpour here. Uh, we have, obviously, a number of these group packs around Oxton, but one of them already celebrates... Uh, uh, a military hero, that's the one for Sir Philip Tuzzi, uh, Brigadier Tuzzi and uh, Rhodes Mount. Locally we do have a number of war memorials, um, there are, they're in the local churches, in Christchurch and in St Saviour's. Uh, visibly outside there's one at Trinity with Palm Grove, which is my own church, and you can see the memorial there for some of the, the local people who gave their lives in, in the First World War. Most of these people were not national heroes in that sense, but they were local heroes. And uh, the fact that's going to be unveiled at the moment is another tribute to one of those one of those heroes. It was fascinating reading the, the book that uh, John and Bob have produced and reading about the Biglands, Birkenhead Bantams. And it, it, it truly struck me that I, with all my height, would have not been uh, able to qualify for the Bantams because you have to be between five foot and five foot three, and I'm far too tall. So uh, I, I think I've probably gone on long enough, uh, but say so thank you all very much for coming. Thank you to all those who have organised this event, and uh, I'll now hand over to uh, uh, thank you. George. Thank George. No, 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 George. George. John. Thank you. John. You're doing well at some timing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alan. Um, my, my brother Michael and I grew up knowing very little about our grandfather. He, he died in the Western Front when our own father was only one. Uh, but the, the one thing we had done was visit his grave in France. My interest in him was rekindled when my wife Susan was over there and I moved to Merseyside and we chose Oxton for our very first house. I made a point of tracking down the house where George had been born and also the house around the corner at 13 Alton Road where he later moved to. So is that a second blue plaque yes, coming up? Yes, oh, a, you can um, afford it. Uh, and actually, I was on the Oxford Society Committee in 1979 when it was the first set up. So, in many ways, this has all sorts of lovely associations for us. Yet the approach of um, the centenary of the First World War provided a spur to my brother and me to, to research the life and war service of our grandfather more properly, uh, and I ended up writing a biography. And in the process, I discovered a great deal about the Bantams, who've had uh, deserved mention already this morning. He was very, very proud of the short men who served under him. Details of the official, in the official Bantam uh, battalion diary, I discovered that my grandfather had actually written it for five months, day by day or night by night in the trenches. And that allowed Michael and me to know exactly where he'd been every day. And we went round 100 years after his death and visited all those sites, including the hill where he was fatally wounded. Um, he was very much a Birkenhead stalwart and a Cheshire Regiment stalwart, because it, he wasn't just in the Bantams when the First World War broke out, but he'd been a volunteer in the Birkenhead Rifles as a young man, where I think the, the drinking and the playing with guns probably appealed, sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful, Paul, but I think that would probably rather appeal to him as a young man. And he, he hurried back from Canada on the outbreak of the First World War to, to sign up, but it was back to Birkenhead, and that's where he wanted to sign up. 
Um, we know from a, a fellow officer's personal diary that he was seen as dutiful, brave, reliable, and cheerful in adversity. In other words, he was a typical Birkenhead Bantam. We make no claim at all that he was more of a hero than the others, but we're dead proud of him. <laughs> and um, we're proud to see the Oxford Society choose him to be the representative of all the other Birkenhead Bantams who served and those who died. Thank you very much. Good afternoon all. I've got hats on, so I'm not shy again. <laughs> uh, my name is Major Paul Hans, and I'm the officer commanding of 234 Rebel Squadron, which is basically a five minute walk up the hill in Austin. And believe it or not, it's not a jumping club anymore. It's a professional reserve army. We've got lots of activities operationally, and every now and then we enjoy a nice picture. Very proud to be there. Uh, I'm going to quickly speak about. I think about 45 minutes, so it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and why actually we remember? Why do we remember these people? That's not before us. And what was the political memory of this? You know, something that happened a hundred years ago. And for me, there's plenty of different reasons on why we're here today. Why we remember those that have gone before us. One, for John and your family. It's a personal reason, clearly. So it's a family member that gave his life the ultimate sacrifice during the First World War. And it's an incredibly proud story. And I've, I've actually read the memoir about half a dozen times now. And how that, that man didn't actually get a mention to statue. Certainly his actions then would have definitely been an award today. But it goes to show, back Jordan at the time of the century, how difficult it was to actually be elevated to be an award. Everyone was going through it. Extremely tough times. It's the dumb, the homeowner, a beautiful house. Clearly for you, you're now the proud owner of a blue flag. And that's fantastic. And I, I, I don't know about you people, but I can't walk past the blue flag without stopping, getting my phone open, getting onto Google and reading about it. it really, you know, my wife hates it. But I'll stand there and I'll probably take a photograph. So please, I apologise about the many people that I walk past and probably stop and just read about George, but that's actually why we do it. Uh, for me, the reason I choose to remember is I love the individual stories. You know, history is a story. And the individual stories of all these people that have prepared themselves to go to war and then what happened during war makes the bigger picture. You know, the Battle of the Somme is a massive story to try and explain. But when you pick the individual people, like George, it brings it to life. And after reading his, his memoir, I was really, even though it was over 100 years ago, and it was a war much harder than anyone I've been to, it was frightening of the similarities that actually myself and George had as, as reserve army officers. I've got a one-year-old son, and his name's George. Uh, I'm currently living in Formby. I've travelled only temporarily because of, of the house market at the moment. Uh, and I believe your grandfather lived in Formby uh, for a short time. Uh, obviously, we're both volunteers in the, in the British Army. Uh, we're both from the Oxford area. And we both like to go abroad and get into a bit of trouble. Uh, we both honeymooned in Scotland. Believe it or not, uh, we both like a tipple. I think it's fair to say, you know, if, if you do get involved in this kind of line of work, then that, that comes with it. It's, we call it team bonding, to be fair. <laughs> uh, and both of our, our fellow officers call us Chumpy and Cherry, and I think that, that George is called that. I'm certainly called that amongst my fellow officers. But for other people, I think the act of remembrance can mean bigger things. Certainly in this community. There's a great sense of pride in what this community and the why that we all did during the Great Wars. Uh, just from where we stand, I like to call it the kind of the military triangle. It's a short walk in that direction to Birkenhead Park. It was the first branch of the British Legion across the, the whole country. You know, great bit of history. And I'm, I'm not going to be a history book because there's a lot of people out here that know much more than me. But that's just a short walk that way. A short walk to the right is Christchurch which were obviously Wilfred Owen, the most famous First World War poet. He used to go to church as father, taught at the Sunday school there. And his house is just a short walk from Christchurch. So just in that little triangle, we've got great stories of George Jordan in the Great War. And obviously not too far away is Birkenhead Town Hall. And that's where the story of the Birkenhead Bantams really started. And the local MP, 
So straight up really of seeing short men who are fit and healthy being turned away from volunteering for duty on the protocol. <laughs> turned away just because they weren't tall enough. You know, we've come a long way from those days. Now, regardless of sex, creed, you know, whatever, it's a completely modern army. Back in those days, there's clearly lots of different restrictions. But the Birkenhead Bantams were clearly formed because he seen there's a lot of men that were willing to fight and they went out of that war and, and did their amazing work. Now, I've served with Gurkhas on operations, and believe me, short men can fight, because there's no argument no when it comes to that one. Get a bit wet and sticky. So, I do believe we've all got different reasons in remembering those that paid the ultimate tax place. But regardless of what those reasons are, I think how we remember, and why we remember, is the main thing, is they won't be forgotten. Going down the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you. Without further ado, I'm very proud and honoured to be able to unveil this blue flag. If you'd like to come in, maybe get some photographs. It's fair normally. Thanks very much, Paul. Well done. Great story. What I forgot to mention was that Dominic and his wife Sarah have put on some refreshments for us. And the rain's stopping, the sun's coming out. So <laughs> help yourselves. Trust in. Thanks, Tom.